I didn't believe it the first time, but now that you've said it, I really do believe it. You're telling us that when we send cells off to get a diagnosis of cancer, they look at those cells, they compare them to some drawings made in 1900, and if they match those drawings, we then tell the patient, congratulations, you have cancer. Drawings made in 1840. I'm sorry, I hate it when I get it wrong. 1840. Yes. So, and we have no modern tests today currently available, widely available to say, no, 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 we know a little bit more than these pictures, than these phenotypes. Just, just a few, but still, we're at a point where, you know, it's really, a, take it to the bank, at least 15% of women with breast cancer, and some people think 25%, fall into this category of overdiagnosis. They have a localized breast cancer, and we really could just watch it and never treat it. And yet, if we do treat it, we change these women's lives forever. We impact their families. We impact their mental health. We have a, a cascade of effects of cancer eyes and cancer victims. And yet, and in prostate cancer, that number is probably higher. The prostate cancer is probably much higher. There's some estimates as high as 60%. See, as high as some people think as high as 60% of prostate cancers should be just left alone. And even telling the person, it sounds like we need a new name for that. You know, well, calling it prostate cancer might be part of the bad PR for those cells. You know, the National Institutes of Health had a meeting in December, and someone actually made that very suggestion. Uh, Dr. Gleason, who actually did the Gleason scoring system, when he initially had the low Gleason scores, he wanted to call it adenosis because people want to cut cancer out, but he was overruled, and it was, it's been called cancer for 50 years. So two-thirds of cancers at the start, you said, two-thirds are caused by lifestyle. You know, people, cancer is the most feared disease in America, and yet what you're saying to us is two-thirds of the time when you had it, you made choices, whether it's smoking or eating or inactivity, that led directly to that cancer. You can look in the mirror and essentially find the reason. It is lifestyle choices that were frequently made 40, 50, 60 years earlier. In the case of breast and prostate cancer, there's some data that suggests it may be lifestyle choices made by, by the, the mother. mother when the child or the cancer patient, who is now 60 years old, was a fetus. So I think people would know it about smoking, but I, how many Americans would know that eating and nutrition is directly related to a third of cancers. The data on obesity and the data on lack of physical activity is all research within the last 15 to 20 years. It really, there were some people who speculated about it 60, 70 years ago, but there really was no epidemiologic study before 1995. Well, I think it's very useful to get the word out. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing it with us. A lot of surprises.